What about this issue around the pro-Palestinian marches and specifically the one planned for Armistice Day here in London on Saturday? Do you think it should go ahead? Well, uh, my own view is that it shouldn't, and it shouldn't because it's not because it should be banned, but because it's a grotesque insult to the British people. Uh, it's a deliberately provocative day to choose for such a march. It's a deliberately provocative march. As The Telegraph showed just yesterday, around half of the organisers of the march are themselves linked with Hamas, uh, which isn't at all surprising. We have Hamas commanders, after all, who live in London very safely, often on welfare. Um, and uh, so, yes, I think it's an intolerable march. It's an intolerable provocation to the British public and the British government and the British police, by the way, who Saturday after Saturday have been made to put up with unbelievable taunting and abuse uh, from the marchers. Uh, it's clearly, it's, it's very clear by now, Piers, that what is happening is that every week the, the crowds are pushing and seeing if they can push the police further and further, harder and harder and be more and more provocative. And they're managing to do that. Uh, but th this is culminating this weekend. And here, here's the thing. I, I, I don't think, and I certainly read and hear, that large numbers of the British public are just not going to put up with this. Uh, the but, march but, may but, be but let me pick you it up on that. diverted away from Whitehall. But, right, but know. let me pick you up on that, because it's interesting, because you, like me, have been a very vocal you know, and a passionate defender of free speech, and we know that that includes that, sure. that, that you have to accept that other people you may vehemently disagree with have a right to free speech. You know, Christopher Hitchens, someone well, that you and I yeah, both but admire... this isn't... This... No, I'm, I'm going to come to my question, but Christopher Hitchens said... The only thing that should be upheld at all costs and without qualification is the right of free expression. Because if that goes, then so do all sure. other claims of right as well. Now, what was interesting to me, I've been on yeah. a bit of a journey this week about what I really think about this. And Nicholas Soames actually said something that really made me sit up and take notice and change my mind about it, actually. Because he's Churchill's grandson, he's a Conservative, um, and he said mm. strongly yesterday that he thinks the march should be allowed to go ahead because the very freedoms that the mm. people on Armistice Day who we honour, who gave their lives uh, in the wars, mm. they did so to preserve the freedoms of people like those marchers, the ones who are not being violent, Ooh, the ones who are no, not showing pro-Hamas stuff, not sure about that, that they have a right to, to protest. Well... Well, uh, well, well, we'll try to single those two things out for a second. Uh, first of all, I don't regard Nicholas Soames as a sort of hereditary uh, 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 inheritor of the mantle of Churchill just because he happens to be his grandson. Um, uh, and besides what you quoted from Christopher earlier, uh, he would never have uh, said that that right extended to supporting terror groups. I mean, we're in a total quandary in the UK, as you know, and it's a despicable quandary to be in. We host him as leaders. We have a deputy prime minister, former deputy prime minister of Iran living in Harrow. We've been at the centre of allowing these people to be in our country and indeed to plot terror from our country for years. So it's always a bit rich to hear the British, I think, uh, lecturing others about being an unsound part uh, of of the international security uh, community. As for the actual marches, look, um, I, I, I'm afraid that the rules on this are very, very clear. Um, you are not allowed to glorify terror or call for terror on the streets of Britain. And that existed before the 2006 Terrorism Act banned glorification, and it certainly exists now. Uh, if you stand on the streets of London calling for jihad, you are calling for terror, and that is actually a place where free speech is at its limit, and is no longer permissible. It's the same with, for instance, calls for intifada on the London tubes. Remember, we had a touch of intifada on the London tubes a few years ago. So again, calling for intifada is something that you're not but allowed to about, do in the UK. Okay, you're, not but Douglas, to let me ask you you're not allowed. You're not allowed to. Just, let me finish one other case. Mm. You're not allowed uh, to stand on the streets of London and call for the murder of Jews or any other minority. No. And yet people have been getting away with this. No, Saturday but, the, after but these Saturday. are and, right. and, and and are the police arresting people? No. Right. No, they're not. The police no. last week said we're outnumbered. Right. So, so that is a key point. The police have said, Met Commissioner Sir Mark Rowley said, the laws created by Parliament are clear. There is abs no absolute power to ban protest. Therefore, there will be a protest this weekend. But the laws are also there to stop people brazenly supporting 
terrorism. So if people were to use a pro-Hamas banner or chant pro-Hamas uh, sentiment, that would be against the current law of this country and the police should take action. That's a different but issue, isn't. though. But no, it, I, it is. It is, but it's not being policed. No, I understand. It's not so, being policed. I understand. So on that, I can agree with you. The police need to enforce the existing laws. However, there will be a but large... But they're not going to because they're outnumbered. No, no. But, they're but outnumbered, you and, so they're you not and going I can to. agree that, that that's wrong, but that shouldn't mitigate the rights... Well, well, well don't you think that matters? Hang on, don't no, you think that matters? No, it does matter. That means that we have a rule of law, but it's not able to be policed. What's the point of having a law if you can't police it? Well, I agree with you, but I also think that the, the, there are a large number of those protesters who genuinely are, in their eyes, protesting for peace and they're pro-Palestinian and they have a view in the way well, that you're... Well, I disagree with that. I disagree with that and I'll tell you one reason why. Mm. Uh, the crowds in question are 100 times larger than the number of people who came out when hundreds of thousands of people were being killed in Yemen. They are 100 times larger than the number of people who came out when Bashar al-Assad killed hundreds of thousands of people in Syria. Seems to me that the people in question only care if one side in the particular conflict happens to involve the Israelis. But and they're they allowed very to. very excited. But indeed. they're allowed to. So I don't... Well, they're allowed to, absolutely. And, and, and we can make judgments about them. Mm. But I would not presume by any means that what you're talking about are pro-peace people. They're anti-Israeli. That's it. Well, but they're allowed to be anti-Israeli. I think that's the point. They're not sure allowed... Sure, they're allowed to be anti... If, if you're allowed to be... In that case, I suppose we have to allow people to be anti-other nations as well. I mean, Britain was founded at the same... Uh, sorry, Israel, sorry, was founded in the same year, within the year of Pakistan. Maybe we should allow large protests of uh, hundreds of thousands of people to go around the streets of uh, London protesting that Pakistan doesn't have a right to exist or right to defend itself. Well, Maybe I don't, we should I don't allow think this. You I don't a... think it's a good, a good precedent I don't whatsoever. Think, well, hang on. I don't think you have a right to say that Israel doesn't exist. If you want the extermination of all people in Israel, well, that, is, that is a criminal offence. How However, if you are literally, as I said... Well, it doesn't seem to be a criminal offence, It doesn't no, seem no, to be a criminal offence. You and I offense. can I agree on that. I repeat, I'm not disagreeing we're clearly with you in a position. We're clearly in a position where they're not policing the law. No, I understand. Otherwise, we wouldn't have all of these videos of people inciting violence on the streets. But, Douglas, you and I can agree that the police need to enforce existing law. I, I don't... There's no dispute between us on that, and they should be doing that a lot more. But we also, I think, have to surely look at the people who are genuinely... There in a non-violent manner, of which there are many. These are massive protests. I think back to the protests, for example, against Donald Trump when he came to London, against America because he was the president. We allowed that to happen. I didn't necessarily agree with sure. them, but we allowed them to happen. You know, I remember Madonna saying we should blow up the White House, a woman's march in Washington. Sure. That happened, and people accepted that. Well, um, yeah, but yeah, but here's here's a, here's a very important point on that, Piers. Uh, Madonna almost certainly, so far as I know, has no military capability behind her. So when Madonna says, I'd like to blow up the White House, it's a piece of stupid rhetoric uh, from a pop star. Um, when you've just had the largest massacre of Jews since the Holocaust and you have Hamas supporters and others marching through London calling for it to happen again, that does matter because there is a capability. So there is a difference, isn't there? Well, there is, but I don't think that all of these protesters are right. pro Hamas. And the difference, the difference yeah, is whether I think or not making... you have a large artillery behind you. Yeah, but you. You, wouldn't, you don't honestly think they're all pro Hamas, these people. Well, I, I, I think that anyone who, for instance, chants things like from the river to the sea is, is in fact... Yes, but they're not all doing that. ...or is criminally ignorant. Oh, well, they are. I mean, there's masses of videos of them marching past Westminster Abbey last week saying exactly that. Yeah, but they're not all uh, doing it. Marching past the Statue of Winston Churchill I, I, last I've week I've watched the videos exactly. and there are well, lots of people uh, okay, well, here, chanting well, and some who aren't. Okay, well, here's a challenge. OK, well, here's a challenge, Piers. If you decided to go on some kind of march mm. and in week one you discovered that you had the BNP along your side calling, for instance, for the murder of all black people, would you not wonder whether or not you should go on week two? Would you not drop out by about week three? I'd have thought so. I would. That's a good question. Uh, and, yes, I would... But that doesn't actually... Yeah, that shouldn't right, act so we can tell something about the marchers. Well, you can tell that... You can say that you have a view, your own opinion is they shouldn't be marching alongside these other people. However, they are still no, entitled... It, in a yeah, free democratic course. country like ours... And look, I, I don't have absolute opinions on this. I, I just think it's a really interesting test of how far free speech goes. Well, here's, and I do feel here's uncomfortable... Here's the interesting test, if I can say yeah, so. Yeah, sure. The, the interesting test, if I can say so, Piers, is there are limits to this, in fact... You are not allowed to glorify the murder of people on the streets of Britain. You are not allowed to be a member of a prescribed terrorist group in Britain. But I return to the point I made at the start. We allow it. 
I repeat, we have Hamas commanders living in the UK who take welfare in the UK and use it to commit terror. Why are they not locked up? Because we have laws that we don't pursue. Yeah. We have criminal charges that we don't use. The person in particular I'm thinking of, Mohammed Sawalha, got British citizenship. You're meant to sign a form saying you're a person of good character to become a British citizen. Can you say that somebody who was a former military commander of Hamas in the West Bank is, quote, a person of good character? I'd say not. So again, like the police, like many other people, the border control in the UK doesn't enforce the law, doesn't care to do so. And I repeat, there is a serious serious problem with this in the UK. Israel, as you can see tonight, can look after itself. I wonder if Britain can say the same. Yeah, listen, I understand that point. You've also said it will have to be counted if the march goes ahead because the British public shouldn't have to put up with it. But what yes. does that mean in reality? Yes. You're not endorsing people to go I think and that the... confront them, are you? No, no, not at all. Um, I'm, I would suggest that if the Cenotaph, for instance, comes under attack, there should be a peaceful ring of people around the Cenotaph to protect it, as with other monuments. And I think that that's what many people will do. I hope they do so peacefully. But as this goes on and as the provo provocations grow and grow, I'm afraid, I'm very, very afraid from what's going to happen this weekend coming in the UK. Personally, I think it's safer in Israel these days than it is in central London, certainly for Jews. Let's talk, um, given you're over there right now, uh, what, what concerns me about what Israel is doing is not their efforts to get rid of Hamas, but the, because of the particular nature of Hamas embedding themselves amongst civilian populations with the massive amounts of civilian casualties that will inevitably come, and that figure will grow and grow and grow. Are we not, as Barack Obama warned, are we not creating here uh, just an, an opportunity for far greater radicalization of all those young Palestinians who watch their loved ones get killed why would we imagine mm. that at the end of all this, they're going to want to do anything other than to become a new version of Hamas in wanting to exact revenge well, for what happened to their families? Well, two things. One is, if you just follow the logic of what Barack Obama said, then you just shouldn't do anything uh, if you're Israel. You should be attacked and just sit back and say, great, we'll wait for the next one. Um, but the second and more important thing is, your question supposes that there is a sort of peaceful Palestinian population in the Gaza who would love a two-state solution and then a few bad apples in Hamas. I think that's not true. Why is it that when uh, one of the victims of the music festival, uh, a poor young German Jewish girl, uh, who it seems was was raped and then uh, brutally uh, murdered and taken into the Gaza naked. Why was it that you can find, and anyone can find this online, uh, a crowd of ordinary Gazans, it wasn't uh, Hamas, it wasn't a Hamas rally, ordinary Gazans uh, uh, spitting on her body, uh, hitting her body, mutilating her body further as it went down the street. Does that strike you, Piers, as a uh, placid population of peacenik types who are just desperately waiting for a two-state solution to be put back on the table for the millionth time in the last 70-something years. It doesn't seem like that to me. No, but there are over two million people in Gaza and there weren't two million people in that video clip. There were a few hundred. So I, I don't like to make... Yeah, well, a few hundred at random. A few hundred at random. And did you see anyone in it saying, hey, guys, stop, we're not meant to mutilate the bodies of, uh, of girls or rape them in public? No, I didn't see that. But, but then what you're really articulating, correct me if I'm wrong here, but isn't what you're articulating really an endorsement of collective punishment where you assume they're all guilty. No. And if they don't stand up to Hamas, they're also guilty. Well, and, and that's where people have a problem, I think, well, with the moral line here, which is no, if, you hold, assuming, if you hold assuming. all the Gazans equally responsible, then is that not collective punishment, which is illegal? Well, first, first of all... First of all, um, uh, there, are, there is some responsibility for the peoples in the Gaza. Um, if you elect, elect Hamas and, uh, and they kill uh, Fatah and then they remain in power for all of the years afterwards, um, I'm afraid that there is some uh, responsibility of the people in that situation. You know, when the Germans uh, um, had Adolf Hitler come to power and voted for him, uh, we in Britain took the view that the German people were responsible in some way. So I'm not for collective punishment per se, but nor am I for this idea that there is something unique going on in the Israeli Gaza context that we in Britain couldn't understand. Actually, there is one we unique in thing. in our own history, there is, there is very one similar things. But there is one unique thing, which is that the population of Gaza is pretty unique in that nearly half of the population are children. 
That is a unique situation. No, I'll tell you what's unique about the population of Gaza. It's the only population in the world where people routinely claim Israelis are committing genocide, but which has a population boom all of the time. I mean, th that strikes me as being quite an interesting thing about the Gaza. Um, but as for, as for the moral community, I want to make a very, very important point, if I can say so on this, which is, you know, uh, people quite often abuse history and they say things all the time. Like, I mean, about the only thing anyone from history knows is about the Nazis. Here's something I can tell you with absolute certainty, uh, Piers, having not just seen some of the results of what Hamas did on the ground here in Israel a few weeks ago, but having watched the videos of the unedited footage, uh, which I was one of the journalists um, was sadly allowed to see the other day. I can tell you one thing. The comparison between Hamas and the Nazis is insufficient. And I... Sorry, there's an incoming... Uh, incoming. Get safe, Douglas. Are you okay, Douglas? from the other direction, so... Okay, anyhow, we're okay. Are you okay? Um, let's, let's just... Yeah, 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 it's fine. Sorry, it was, it, was a, it was a rocket coming. It looked like it was just going to land on us here. Which, which way okay. was that rocket coming from? Okay. Was it coming from Gaza or from Israel? Yes, it seemed to be coming from Gaza, so... Yeah, it's fine. It's okay, it's been happening all day. Um, let me just I mean, finish no, this just, point, just, just Before we go on, um, Douglas, Atman, how does that make, sure. you, how does that make you feel? What just happened there? I mean, it's, uh, I'm, I'm a little used to it. I was in Ukraine last year and was in Kherson and uh, uh, Odessa and uh, Mikhailayev and when the Russians were shelling it. So I'm a little used to it.